All right, here we go again. Oh, of course, start off with thick ballast. Okay, so our next point of interest uh, is not coming up for about 600 meters or so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zip you ahead a little bit. So just enjoy the, uh, the scenery as we pass through an, yet another cut. You see the base of the telegraph pole there. Approaching our next major stopping point here um, you can see the grade starts to widen out a little bit here uh, and the reason why it widens out is we have a another significant spot on the line and we do have yet another spur and another place that is called McCurdy so we're coming up to what is known as the McCurdy pit and there's all kinds of sort of debris associated with this. So here you can see there's track um, tie plate. That looks like, I don't know what that is. There's all kinds of tie plates here. There's uh, metal strapping. Uh, usually those strapping is for the uh, bundles of ties. And then here we can see a flanger sign. Now what's kind of interesting is I'm not sure the, the flanger sign, oops, is a step on a spike here the flanger sign was for the spur or the flanger sign was for the road crossing that's coming up so again this is known as McCurdy pit um, I'm not quite sure the story about this it's a little kind of it's a little confusing uh, there you can see another tie plate so basically um, this pit has been around for a long time because I have documentation that talks about the McCurdy pit in the 1960s. I think the pit doesn't show up as a, as a spur on railway timetables until the 1970s. Now what's interesting is um, in the late 60s when uh, McCurdy station was taken off of the um, was was taken off as, as a station on the line um, and this happens quite often that when you look at timetables you know a place is a station and it disappears for a while and then it comes back again and what hopefully the dog's not rolling in something ripe um, so this is what happened with McCurdy so again the station was back that way was taken off in the 1960s and then in the 1980s McCurdy shows up as a station again but not back there here so the pit um, shows up as a station and uh, this pit was uh, was a very very significant um, source of gravel um, so it was a you mean there was a lot of uh, gravel and ballast and things that they uh, that they dug from here we're kind of following the uh, the spur here and we'll follow the spur down and so if you actually go on my website and again there's a link in the description you'll uh, you'll you'll see a photograph and thanks to mike for sharing the photograph with me uh you'll basically see a photograph um of mccurdy you see the station board and basically you see the spur coming off of uh the main line and so the spur would have come down here uh, it was a fairly large spur uh, and again, they would have dug, you can see all of the gravel here. You can see some of the remnants. You can see a spike. You can see rail connector here. Um, so again, all kinds of material would have been, uh, would have been dug from here. So what we'll do is we'll head back up into the, uh, uh main line. And so, um, yeah, so this material was used for, you know, repairs and work on the line. So for example, um, there was a, uh, uh, a fairly large trestle that was filled in uh, just east of uh, Jellicoe um, near Kinghorn Road uh, but around milepost 45 in the early 1980s and uh, uh, a lot of the gravel for that came from 
um, came from this uh, came from this pit. Uh, here you can see a metal rod, and there's one on the other side too. And I'm guessing um, these are the. Uh, there's no signage on it, but I'm guessing that this is the. Uh, these are the flanger signs for the crossing. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pause for a minute, and what I'm going to do is just to show you the extent of this pit. Um, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to give you some some drone footage here uh, of the uh, of the pit. Mm -hmm. 